campus, your number one campus show in Ghana. Today we are in Comerica. And this is one of the biggest universities in Ghana, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, KNUST for short. And today we are here to explore that community that says is the premier institution for science and technology in Ghana. So stay with us, you're watching Joy Campus. I am Faustina Safo. And my name is Pakwisi Shando. <laughs> I think also off campus the transportation you have to exorbitant charges from the drivers and stuff so sometimes you have to walk and come to class where you have classes which are far have inter long interval between them you have to come and then go back to hostels and come sometimes it's very stressful and sometimes you have no choice to dodge some lectures <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, one of the people that have been missing classes. Eh? Okay, but you use the shuttle though. Yeah, but for the shuttles, it's mostly from the, my college to this area, and then where the areas where the shuttles don't go, we don't use them. So yeah, I'll say I actually don't use the shuttle because the shuttle don't go to the area where. I live here. Thank you so much. So you're still watching Joy Campus. We've been interacting with students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Now, key issues that have come up during our interactions with them. One is accommodation. And then we'll be speaking to authorities to find out what they're doing about that. Another issue that has come up is also the internet connectivity. Now, they have free Wi-Fi here, but however, they've raised concern about how strong it is. So we will be interacting with management as well to find out what can be done to ease the plight of students here at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Hi Hansen, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm well, I'm well. How is life on campus though? Um, this economy, like it's been hard, but you know, we are coping with it. How do you cope? Share with us. Um, actually, um, my dad is a little bit financially stable, so I, I think, yeah, I think that's the reason why I'm coping with it. Yeah. Now, Hans, tell me, um, in a week, roughly, how much do you spend? In a week, um, I can spend five hundred a week. Five hundred Ghana cities. Because personally, hey, are you managing or you're living life? <laughs> I'm managing. I'm managing. <laughs> you're managing yeah. with five hundred Ghana cities. Because, because, um, you know, um, you know off campus you know is you know like the hostel i'm at is is far from this place so anytime i have to take boats you know yeah and boat to now um they don't take discounts even if you get discounts they will say no no they won't take it so you know you have to pay them like the actual prices and and food here you know is also expensive can you imagine gobe gobe if you don't if you don't spend 15 cities you won't be full a gobe crisis in fact it's everywhere so it's not just in accra it turns out in kumase as well gobe 15 cities interesting so i'm sure as a student so it means you spend like 100 cities a day yeah probably yeah but you know the, i think next week is mid sem so i've spent all my money you see that's why i'm working like you won't see me you won't see me and like if you do me interview my money cast is finished so that's why i'm working interesting so this is actually you trying to cut down cost yeah yeah i'm cutting down cost yeah i don't because i called my dad you know um i think last week i don't want to call him this week but he'll be like hey come on nah. and i've sent him my results he viewed it and he said nothing that means i'm dead so. <laughs> <laughs> it is well with you. <laughs> no, no worry. I'm sure you have mercy on you because you enjoy campus. Daddy, please have mercy on him. And send him money, okay? <laughs> no, but studying on campus, though, how, how do you better your grades? The course I'm doing, industrial arts, you know, um, is quite difficult. You know, every course is difficult. But on, it's a lot of practicals. You know, you have to do the practicals. You know, if you don't do the practicals and you try doing the theory, you fail because the practical carries like high marks. So you need to like, you know, work on your practicals and like, yeah. So uh, my course, when you do the practicals, the practicals, they ask questions about it on the theory. Yeah, so you'll be able to do the theory. 
when you do the practicals. So watching Joy Campus, I am Faustina Safo, and I have two gentlemen by me. This is Nat, and this is Roland. Nice meeting you. You're in level 300. What are you studying? Painting and sculpture. Interesting, and you? Same course, painting and sculpture. Great. So tell me, how is life on campus for you? Uh, life on campus is it's okay. It's okay, because for me, I don't really spend a lot of time on campus. Just class and back to my hostel, so. It's okay, so far, so good. What hotel are you at? Um, Crystal Rose Hostel. Interesting. And so, so far, we've been interacting with some of your students, and one concern they raised was internet connectivity. Um, do you have that same challenge? Oh, no. Nah, like, aside me uh, being in the hostel, there's nothing wrong with internet connectivity. When I come to class, it's, it, it works pretty well. Yeah. And when you are walking around campus, Everything is fine, but some some point it doesn't. It's slow. Some some point it's slow. Some sometimes it's high, depending on the number of people using the Wi-Fi and something like that. Okay, so I'm sure you have the location coordinates. If you want strong Wi-Fi connectivity, where should I go if I'm in KNUSC? Okay, so usually places where there are not a lot of people around. So place like here, I don't know, the Wi-Fi is is bad, it's poor because of the the halls and all those things. So if you find somewhere that there are not so much, like a lot of people there, yeah, I think you have quality Wi-Fi. So what do you want to do with your course you're studying in future? Or is this something you're just studying for now? Is it you want to be an artist? Yeah, I want to be an artist. I want to be an independent artist. Yeah. Do you have a page? I have a page on Instagram. Yeah. What's the response so far? Like, would you, when I post my artwork, people are like, oh, post it here. It's really nice. It's cool. Did you do it yourself? All those things. It's really cool. But then, in some way, some way, there are two sides of the story. Some hey, so tell me the other side. Sometimes, what you're actually doing, you're confused. Mm -hmm. But people are like, oh, it's nice. But when you look at those ahead, so they make it look so complex, so, some way. And for me and my course, like, you can ask them. We, sometimes we, some people get depressed because they, they don't know which way to go and all those things. But we trust God. Okay. Yeah, we trust God. But it appears you're really struggling. But then how do you cope on campus, especially in this economy, where everybody is trying to cut budgets? In a week, roughly, how much do you spend? It's, it's some way, a huge amount because of our practical works. Yeah. For instance, this, this week, I spent over like 300 CDs, or like 400 or so, just on my materials for my project. And I have to take some from my feeding to actually sponsor this thing. So. Some way the the economy is really not helping. It's not help. So for you, minus feeding, you spend like 300 Ghana cities. So including feeding, like roughly, how much would the figure be? Feeding, maybe 600. 600 a week. How how do you get that money? Mostly, do you rely solely on your parents, or you have to do side jobs? Yeah, I do side jobs. I do graphic design. Yeah. And call other family members. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie, you have to be wild, or so. How do you do it? Do you rely solely on your parents? Do you call family members, like he said, or do you do your personal job? I mean, I don't do any personal job, but I do call my parents. If uh, I don't get help from my parents, I look for other alternatives. Maybe uh, from uh, my friends, from my church, or something like that. Yeah. So when I have nothing on me. I know where to go to, yeah. So how much do you spend in a week? <laughs> like that one, yeah. Mm. It's a lot, it's a lot, it's a lot. 500? Oh, no, nah, it's more than 500. I can't give you an amount. Hey, <laughs> Chesa, you're living large in school. <laughs> no, 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 not large. Because it's so demanding. Yeah, the program is so demanding. We have to use our money to do certain stuff. And right now, even I have money on me, but that money is meant for my uh, my my feeding, but I have to use it for my practicals. And when you when you keep on calling, maybe at home they will say, "Oh, what kind of program are you doing?" Maybe uh, you may be having a a, a sibling who will be, who is also in the university offering like business. They don't request for money, but always you are requesting for money, so they will be thinking some like maybe you are using the money for something or which is not so. Yeah, so. To our parents, when we ask for money, they should 
they should open their hands. Yeah. Okay, so parents, please open your hands for your children. Okay, but what challenges have you observed on campus that you feel management should address? And because we are young and we are living in a digital world, so I think maybe data and all those things, access to the internet. Yeah, so I think. And you, what do you think? Um, what challenges on campus you feel management should address? Oh, about the transportation issue too. It's a key because where I am, uh, Gaza, like I'm, I'm at the almost like the last place of. Uh, I'm at Anglican Hostel. That place there is no shuttle, so in the evening, sometimes you do get robbed and attacked. But I've not experienced some before. But those who have been saying, it's real. There is no security over there, and I don't know how they are going to work on that. Yeah, but we also pay the uh, hostel fee into the account. I don't know if it's the school account or something like that. So they should work on that for us. Okay, so you want them to provide shuttles to your hostels? Yes, and security as well. Yeah. Okay, so you're still watching Joy Campus. We've been interacting with Nat and Roland. They raised two key concerns. One, security, and the other is transportation. They want management to see to the fact that they are secured, especially when they are around campus and outside campus as well. And they also want access to the shuttle, especially even though they are staying outside of campus. They want access to the shuttle. So you're yeah, still so watching Joy Campus. I am Faustina Safo interacting with students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Stay with us. Watching Joy Campus and I have with me another student, Bridget. Bridget, thanks for joining us on Joy Campus. Yeah. Bridget, tell me, since I came here, I've been hearing a lot of things about yeah. Kumasi, but then I want you to tell me, how is life in Kumasi? What level are you in? I'm in Fond, really. How is yeah. life in Kumasi? Tell me. Yeah. Like, life is good, but just like stressful around Kumasi, yes, especially on campus here. Yeah. Yeah. Why is life mm. stressful on campus? Yeah, you know, lectures, waking up early and then, you know it's not easy, but you just have to wake up early, rush to um, lecture, um, rush to lectures and then, you know, some of the lectures will be like their conducted test. You have to wake up early and go before class starts. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Mm. So level 400, it means you are completing soon. What mm. course are you studying? I'm studying accounting. Accounting, yeah. wow. So you're coming into the accounting space. Yeah. What should we expect? <laughs> first class, <laughs> third class lower. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> we are expecting first class, but we are just hoping for the best, whatever that comes out in the end. Interesting. So are you on campus? No, I'm off campus. Why? Because, mm. okay, I used to be on campus in first year and second year, but Getting campus again in my third year, it was so tough, like it was very, very tough. So I had to go off campus and then. Wow. Yeah. Why? Why was it tough for you? You know, <laughs> you know, campus is like everyone wants campus. Yeah, everyone wants campus. So that everyone will be rushing. And then the protocol is also very high. If you don't have um, a protocol to link you up, it's very difficult to get. Campus, um, campus hostel, yeah. Mm. So with yeah. the hostel you have, how affordable is it as compared to uh, if you were staying on campus? Okay, so far, I would say my hostel is okay. It's okay. I think some of the prices of campus are the same here. Yeah. yeah, but I see that some of the facilities of campus too, they are very, very nice. Mm. Yeah, but you know, you know, before coming here, people give you that perception that Brunei or Seven, like, you know, I don't know, this Those campus, the, like, uh -huh. so, like, everyone wants to go there, everyone wants to be on campus, and, but all the same. <laughs> it's okay, okay, so yeah. do you have to board a vehicle to campus every now and then, because of where you stay? Yeah, yeah, what? sometimes, mm -hmm. but sometimes I do work. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, do how do you campus. survive on campus? <laughs> Roughly, how, how much do you spend in a week? Mm, close to, like, 150 to 200 cities a week. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. Is that you managing or like living where you're living large? Is that the amount you spend? <laughs> That's the management alone because you know the economy now and the things are so so tough, like things are very hard, things are very expensive now, so like it's too much. I mm. thought things were cheap in Kumasi. <laughs> Not as in first, comparing now to first, like I don't think things are so cheap the way they used to be. Yeah. Yeah, but I've heard from others that when you go to a room, things are cheap over there. But me personally, I'm not been there to confirm, uh, so I can't testify. Oh, you can't. Okay. 
But I, I noticed you have like a shuttle that takes you around. Yeah. Is it for only people on campus or even when you don't stay in campus you can also join? Oh the yeah, shuttle? when you don't stay on campus you can join because we are all students so yeah, they have stations around and the bus stop so we can just go there and then we bought a shuttle. Okay, so yeah. do you have to pay for it? Is no, it free? it's free. Yeah. Okay. Experientially, I would say it's a very serene atmosphere. You can hear the birds chirping and uh, the wind blowing as well. That is the mood at uh, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. But amidst all the beauty in the environment, the students are not particularly happy about a number of issues. And one of those issues that continues to bedevil their fortunes is the matter of accommodation. It's a school that is estimated to have a population exceeding 90,000. But accommodation facilities does not do not measure up to uh, that particular number and the students of course are agitated we're going to delve into that and so uh, seated by me right here is the um, president the the president of the Lux secretariat here at the Kwame Nkrumah University of uh, Science mm -hmm. and Technology I'll give him the opportunity to introduce himself and then we'll delve into the uh, conversation it's Joy Campos uh, but generally how are you doing um, you know, by the grace of God, I'm doing so well. Mm. I'm doing so well, and I'm very happy to have you guys over here. Mm. It's, it's a very good, you know, venture, and I think we we'll, would we'll, we'll discuss a lot. But mm. I'm doing very well. I'm doing very <laughs> right, well. right. You are doing very well, but a lot of students are not doing very well. They are not happy. They feel that the accommodation crisis is having a toll on their study. Do you, studies? Do you, do you agree to this sentiment in the very first place? Okay. So um, first and foremost. There are so many things that the university is a community on its own. Mm. And day in, day out, management, student leaders, and all stakeholders have been putting in a lot of effort to make the university environment a more serene one mm. for students mm. and also a more serene one for students um, learning and teaching activities. So, yes, we've been tackling our problems one after the other. Accommodation, yes, is also part of our problems of which we are still tackling. Mm. You know, accommodation is directly proportional to the number of students that you have uh, mm. as a community. So in as much as we keep tackling the problem, there are more that we could also do. There is, there is more because the students' number keeps, keeps increasing. So yes, I would say there is accommodation problem in Kenya, as there is in many other universities across the country. Right. So what, what policy has management been contemplating over time to address um, the issue and then to mitigate the impact because this is not a, a, a challenge that came out of nowhere. It's been a perennial one. It's been there for some time. What really is, is the school authority doing? School okay. authority is doing. So if you look behind me over here, oh. I think the trees are blocking it a bit, but right. you would find a beautifully built uh, Mastercard hostel, oh. the Impact Building. Oh. So it was recently built, and what I'm just trying to let you understand is the only solution for an accommodation crisis is to have more hostels. Oh. So the only thing the university can do to um, evacuate or to eradicate this problem oh. is to build more hostels. Oh. And the university in itself doesn't have so much funds to build so many hostels at a particular point in time. Right. So I think one policy the university, is, the university has brought out to help um, with the numbers of accommodation in and around the university environment is to allow or to open room for investors to come and get a space on the university campus mm. and build hostels mm. on a BOT contract basis. Mm. They should come build, build more and hostels and transfer. As, exactly. Right. They should come build hostels to benefit students on campus. So I what I'm I guess what it's all about is the university is trying its best to get more hostels on campus. Mm. So whatever policy or whatever procedure that they will take that would enable the building of more hostels on campus, provided it's in customs with the university status. Mm. The university is doing that. In addition to that, what, what is the student body doing as well? Any complementary uh, moves to, uh, as it were, boost what the management is, is doing? So, you know, like I said, in accommodation problem, it's a serious problem in Kenya because we have the largest number in, in, in the country mm. as far as universities are concerned. Um, so, student leaders over the years, I think that is one of the major uh, 
campaign policy that everybody talks about. Everybody oh. is trying to say, oh, when we come, we'll reduce hostel fees and all these things. So I think that being the interest of student leaders every year or for a very long time, whenever they come into office, they contribute oh. into making sure that that reality becomes possible. So student leaders over the years, in consultation with the Directorate of Student Affairs, have been having negotiations and you know discussions with off-campus hostels. So I think now there is even an app that is to regulate off-campus hostels to make sure that what is happening there is in the known of the yeah. university. Now, the thing is that in as much as we are crying of accommodation crisis, there are accommodation, there are houses or there are hostels off campus where students get the opportunity to be accommodated in. But then there are more accommodation off campus and that is not really good for the university. The university should have more of these hostels on campus, on, campus. on the premises, yes, exactly. so that they are able to exercise exactly. control and jurisdiction. Yes. So right. that is where the university is working towards. Mm. That is where the investor is working towards to have more of the hostels off campus within its umbrella, oh. so that it can be able to have that power over there. So, the student leaders have been speaking with, in consultation with the director of student affairs, have been speaking with hostel managers and hostel owners to get the issue resolved. Exactly. Well, what What is your outfit doing specifically, the the Nooks Secretariat? Okay. What What plans do you have? Okay, so. In this vision, in this vision, we are all student leaders, so mm. I guess this is one thing that we are all doing. Mm. But what we are doing is to begin another student hostel. Already, we already have the SRC student hostel. The NUCS being another big body in the university or another big student association in the university sees that having another student hostel will go a long way to help in this problem as well. You know, we are fighting for more accommodation on campus. If we have a hostel built by students for students, I think it's also another good narrative. So that's what we are doing. Oh. We are embarking on a Nooks hostel. Yeah, that's oh. what we are doing this year. Have you have you started? I mean, uh, paint a, paint a picture of the progress of work that has been done so far ever since you okay. conceived this uh, thought. Okay, so you know, this is um, we we started the initiative this year. So we need to make sure that the bed plans are all intact with the early stages, everything is being made sure that it's available, you get it. So we've been speaking with the management, we, we, we've tried having the concept of the hostel, how it's going to be like, the structure, what kind of hostel it is going to be, oh. where it is going to be oh. uh, built, the cost of building that hostel and all these things. Those are the things we've been working on ever since my administration. Ah, Fais, talking about um, um, cost, I want us to talk about the, the avenue for revenue mobilization. Okay. Students are already paying fees and that for some is, is a challenge. If your, your outfit is contemplating the erection of a new hostel facility, how are you going to generate funds? Are you going to go to the same students and say that, look, contribute to the funds or, I mean, contribute to the project or you're going to look out for other, you know, external means of um, okay. resource mobilization. So, um, yes, like I was saying, the hostel is going to be built on the principle of hostel built for students by students. Oh, yeah. So if you look at our architectural designs and the structure of the hostel, it was made by students. Mm. Every single step of this hostel, we are trying to make it as student generated as possible. Mm. Student owned student project. Student owned, student project, owned yes. project. So right. maybe in the few years to come, a student will come to this school and will see a structure in the university, a very beautiful structure in the university and you know that it was him mm. that did that. Mm. So yes, how we are going to do it is, we are going to, we are students, we proposed a bill to the SRC parliament and it was done, we, 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 we spoke to students, we came out, we, let, we made them aware of our intentions, what we wanted to do, they understand the crisis, mm. they know what's at stake, so we just made them understand that this is something that we can actually do. So it's not like we are even imposing on them, they have accepted that they would so want... So there is consensus between your outfit exactly, and, and the students, right. exactly. Through the SRC Parliament, where we have most of student constituencies. Well, when was that that bill passed? It was passed last semester. Yeah. Yes, I think a copy was even shared around just so that students know that what they are saying is being heard. All the grievances they are making, it's yeah. being heard. But then this is something we actually need. 
So we, we, we had a con we had a con we even had a town hall meeting with students mm. just so that we can engage them and let them understand that this is what we are doing. So after that, the students agreed that there should be an addition, a little addition on their fees of how much? Of ten cities. Mm. Ten cities, which is nowhere near <laughs> the amount that we would need, but an effort made by students so that we could add it to be a major source of generation. Talking about the amount that you need, how much do you need? Um, so Estimatedly. So we are still having that discussion. We want to present it out to, um, to the good people of Ghana so that um, people outside, patriotic citizens, can also help in this quest or in this um, thing that we've embarked Old on. students inclusive. Yes, old students and any other person, maybe even your, if you are not an old student, but your son or your daughter or your brother or your sister is <laughs> right. in Kenya and you right. want to, yes. So we want to make sure that before we bring out these figures, we are, we are, we are very sure of the figures. And but can you, can you project a range? Of course, we are still uh, putting things together and the conversation is still ongoing. Exactly. And therefore, I understand you may not be able to name with, okay. with exactitude a specific figure, but can you give a range? I mean, off the top of your mind. Yeah, you see, if, if I give a range, that is what's going to be in people's mind. Mm. So it would be very dangerous for me to give a range that I'm but, not but, sure. But you are supposed to guide how they extend their generosity. Exactly. I mean, exactly. if, if, if we don't know what exactly you are looking at, we, we can't uh, budget that. Oh, yes. So accordingly. what we we'll do is, um, speaking, okay, since you are pushing, <laughs> speaking with uh, a few people, the project is to go beyond or is to be in the space of maybe 100 million Ghana cities. Mm. Yes, 100 million Ghana cities for a thousand bed hostel. Mm. Yes, um, we would share the we would share the designs mm. and how the projects is or, or how we visualize the project. Mm. We we'll share it so that um, you know viewers can also see and see what we are talking about. Mm. But then that is where the cost is. Well, but but it is not a fixed cost. Now, a fixed that cost, is understandable. Yes. What other means of funding are you looking at apart from the, the ten cities contribution from students. Okay, so student associations on campus also have administrative funds. Mm. The ones we use to run administrations, you know, to help you know, organize programs and make students more better people. We are willing to take a chunk of that as well and donate it to the project. Mm. So NUCS per se our admission, we are donating 25% of our... Have you passed a bill that is going to compel other student yes, associations to we, also, you yes. know, contribute a quota? Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, NUGS is giving 25%. How much are they giving, those other student associations? So it, uh, it will be dependent on them. What the, uh, the bill we pass on them is that they will donate. But as to how much they will donate will depend on the particular person heading the association at that time. <laughs> If you get it. But we, it's our home. Is that, is that not a weak policy? I mean, if you, if you leave it to the discretion of the leader at the helm of affairs at the time, uh, I mean, it becomes discretionary. If the leader then decides to give just zero points, you know, something very insignificant, wouldn't that, you know, uh, hamper the, the project? That is why in establishing this project, we are not working alone. We are working with the director of student affairs, who also works with all student associations. Okay, you get it. So um, donations into this project will be mostly oversaw, overseen by him. Mm. So I'm sure he, he would he would make sure that it is not zero point zero zero something. All right, it's something right. that, that, that can. That that point is made. So you are giving twenty five percent of our. You're expecting that the others would even give do more. Yes, if possible. Mm. But if not, they can't go below twenty five percent of. <laughs> they are, the administrative. That, that, that's well noted. You're, you're very final words on this particular subject matter. Yeah, because it's, it's something that I think it's our major contribution to the crisis, you know, the several issues on campus. Management is really doing so much. I would really commend, I'll use this platform to commend Care University Management. They are really doing so well yeah. in making the university a very student friendly environment. Yeah. But then, in as much as management is doing that, we, we as student leaders also need to do things in our little ways mm. to make sure that we are helping in this regard. Mm. So this is something that we NUCS is doing and started this administration and I think should it be done, it will go a long way to help students. Great. That is why I'm very particular about it. Great and I'm sure we are also 
uh, interested in this particular subject matter as well. Hafiz Toyib is the uh, president of the NUCS Secretariat here at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He says that he acknowledges that accommodation is indeed a big issue here on campus. It's a headache uh, for many of the enrolled students and that is why his outfit is rolling out the NUCS hostel uh, project. If you are listening and you think that, well, this is an issue that you want to be philanthropic about, I'm sure <laughs> his doors are open. You can always uh, reach out to them and help uh, where they cause. It's still Joy Campus. We are here at the institution that says that it's the premier when it comes to science and, and technological education here but you in said Ghana. The institution My that name says... is Park Wissi. Stand off the conversation. Continue. Of deficits in accommodation appears to be a monster present in almost all the tertiary institutions here in Ghana and here at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, the situation appears to be the same. However, uh, the management of the university has rolled out a number of policies to mitigate the situation. As of now, uh, we've been joined uh, by the university's relations officer. He's going to tell us what exactly the university is doing to ensure that accommodation becomes more convenient for the thousands of students who are studying here at the nation's university. Joining me now is Dr. Daniel Norris Bekwe. He is the uh, university's relations officer. Sir, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, how, how are you doing? I'm well, and uh, speaking from the best university in this country. <laughs> and, and, and mind you, you know, we are not, we don't pride ourselves at the, only the best, uh, the premier university. We are the number one center for quality education in the whole of Africa. In the whole of Africa? Yes, and the fourth in the world mm. according to the 2022 times higher education ranking mm. um, in the past like uh, 2019 between 2019 and 2021 mm. we also recognized by the US News and World Report as the best university in, in Ghana mm. and uh, we were number 14 in 2019 mm. and then we jumped we came down to number 12 mm. in Africa mm. and so if we are we are the best <laughs> and uh, and you know our student population is is, is the highest yeah, now the highest uh, about absolutely. eighty five thousand students mm. uh, and, and so we're mm. doing a lot of things. So sir, in the midst of all of these accolades, how come uh, some of your students are still grappling with uh, accommodation? Yeah, you you know, mm. uh, as a university, uh, we we have been doing quite a lot uh, between. 2014 to 2020, mm. you know, we're envisaging that um, the first batch of, uh, even I think between 2019 mm. down, we're expecting that we're going to be having the first batch of free SHS yes, students. Yes, yes. Mm. And so the, num the, 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 the focus was more on uh, increasing the infrastructure, mm. i.e. lecture theaters, um, simulation rooms, mm. lab laboratories and all those uh, to ensure that uh, our students can sit comfortably mm. and learn in peace. Um, and we have done so well in that uh, direction. Mm. Um, we have been relying on um, business uh, individuals mm. who, who are having hostels all, all around the university. Honestly speaking, I, I say we are one of the most fortunate universities because if you go around from Bomso to Kote to Dedriakon and East Environs, you have private hostels sprinkling up, uh, all around. And, and, and so accommodation uh, has not been, though it's, it's, a, it's a problem in all the universities, uh, it's, has not been as alarming. Mm. So as, severe here. Yes, so severe here mm. as people, some people may tend to put it. Mm. Uh, for, being the students with the, with the university, being the university with the highest students enrollment, we we haven't had any students sleeping outside. Mm. Uh, we well, have, when you say outside, what, what like exactly? sleeping uh, on the street or okay. not having a, a roof so over his mm -hmm. or her head. Uh, we have had this uh, policy of uh, in, out, 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 which which enables us to accommodate majority of the first to the first year students who come to the university, and then by second year you are supposed to move to outside hostels, 
uh, we do have some uh, hostels on campus mm -hmm. apart from the traditional halls of residence. Uh, the Brunei uh, complex is there accommodating uh, over uh, 10,000 students. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the Gaza. I don't know if you have been there. No, not, uh, not if you yet. go to Gaza, not yet. It's also part of the campus hostels. Mm. Then we have the SRC hostels. Mm. Then we also have the Tech Credit, the Credit Union hostel. All of them come together to add up to the existing hostels, uh, halls of residence, traditional halls of residence on campus. However, they, those hostels we are talking about are for continuing students, mm. including other private hostel that we have registered under the Dean of Students uh, Office, the Directorate of the, of the Student but, Office. But those are outside of the universities. Th those are outside of the university mm -hmm. premises. How then are you able to, um, as it were, control the students there? Yes, honestly speaking, uh, let me just say something before we go to the control students. Mm -hmm. We have been able to bring now about 485 private hostels. Mm -hmm. Uh, 485? Yes, over 485 private hostels uh, under uh, an arrangement uh, we call the, the, the under the directorate of the students' uh, uh, affairs. affairs. And so we, we are able to have regular meetings to find out what is happening at those hostels and then to see if they are really uh, habitable mm. and in good condition for our students. We have gone ahead to actually develop an app that enables students to log on and then access these hostels. We have categorized the hostels into category A, category B, category C, and D, depending on, depending on the facilities they have there and 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 and, and the, the cost involved as well. No, the facility mainly. The facilities we have right. there and other things right. uh, we're talking about internet services right. we are talking about uh, cctv right. uh, we are talking about security 24-hour security right. we are talking about how the rooms the the nature of the room and the size of the room the bed and the mattress the everything right. go into the categorization right and so we have from category a to d so depending on your pocket, mm. every student can find a place mm. to, 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 to stay. The challenge we've had is uh, some session of students complaining about the, the cost in some hostels. We call it the luxury hostels. Mm. Uh, but that, I, I lay the blame solely on the doorstep of students. Why? Because those hostels don't fall under the directorate of the junior student mm. or they don't want to be part of the association mm. do you understand the point so they operate autonomously yeah they operate autonomously okay do you understand the yes. point and so when those people you can't they are private hostels they are people who have gotten their money and they have decided to build hostels eh? if a student says that i want that kind of luxury hostel where there is DSTV, <laughs> there is a, a air condition, mm, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, and all those. Things. You cannot say don't go there. Mm. And so some of them go there, and those those would charge slightly higher than those ones that have registered under the directorate of the student you know, of 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 the, the uh, student affairs. affairs. And so you, if you go there, and they charge you exorbitant fees, then you have yourself to blame. Unfortunately, this is what I've been saying and I've been advocating this every time I get the opportunity to speak to parents. Mm -hmm. I say, when your child or your ward is in the university, sometimes make a move, come around, find out where your child is staying, mm -hmm. what your child is doing. Mm -hmm. Because we can assist every parent who has a ward here to get a very decent accommodation at affordable rate. Mm -hmm. But when you leave the students on their own, they tell parents that, oh, the hostels are all expensive and this so much that this is where I want to go. But because that is what they want to do. Mm. They want to go to those luxury hostels. Mm. Uh, and so I can assure you, accommodation in KNUSC is not much of a big problem. Mm. Though we would want to accommodate majority of our students on campus. On campus. 
Do you so understand? Are there, are there long term plans? So, that so there are plans. Right. We have actually advertised on many occasions, including your platform, mm. Joy, uh, uh, My Joy Online, or mm. Joy News, and mm. that we are open to BOT. Uh, uh, build, call operate, it? And build operate and transfer mm. and we have actually improved the conditions attached to it right. so if if you if you are a private person and you have money and you want to build you can come to KNUST we'll give you the land mm. uh, uh, it's a service plot and then you build operate it for about 40 to 45 years depending on the terms you go you agree on you agree on and then when you are done uh, making your profit, you hand over to the university to mm. operate. Because the land, we can't dash you the land. Mm. <laughs> uh, there's possibility that the uh, student enrollment will be increasing. When this university started in 1961, uh, uh, 60, thereabout, uh, we are total, the student enrollment, it started with 200 students. Mm. Today, we are 85,000. You understand the point. So, if you give the land to private people to to own it forever, tomorrow, tomorrow, right. when the numbers continue to increase, and I know very soon we are going to hit hundred and fifty thousand, mm. then we'll be having problems. Right. That, that, that point is, is so. Right. So, students, uh, we have we have we are open to BOT. Mm. Uh, those who have money can come. We'll give you the land. You build. You operate for forty five years, and you make and look. There are many conditions, very positive conditions attached to this very BOT. Favorable one. Favorable one. Very favorable one. Uh, for instance, if you build on campus, uh, we give you, uh, we make sure that your hostel is filled up first before we actually even allow them to go off campus. Mm. Because when we have more students on campus, then our duty of ensuring that the safety of students is reduced. Mm. Currently, we we are having to extend security services to all the private hostels where our students are staying. Mm. We have regular police patrol. We have to recently we bought pickups for the police, the key USC police, mm. to continue to do. We have also uh, uh, strengthened our internal security people, giving them patrol vehicles to go around every evening to make sure that our students are safe. We also operate. Uh, a shuttle service where buses shuttle students between campus to off campus mm. up to 11. Mm. However, if all the um, hostels were on campus, it would have been easier. It would, it would have been easier. Right. Do you understand it? That, that, that but we do not have the money now as a university to be putting up hostels. Mm. Even though we are trying to begin to do some of these things, and fortunately, we have some few private uh, entities who have expressed interest, and uh, MOUs are being signed, mm. and so very soon, some of them are, are moving to site. If you go to the the Gaza area that I'm talking about, some of the hostels, some people have built, operated, and transferred. Others are building mm. now, and so I'm sure that uh, in the near future. The situation will the be situation will be, uh, will be will be there will be much much improvement. Right now, let's talk about another issue that that bothers students. Now we, we've heard some students say that uh, management is unduly interfering in the affairs of students, particularly with respect to uh, student elections and all. They they allege, and we have seen a statement from them indicating that management is now is now setting out the protocols and the ground rules for student elections in a way that they feel. Um, constitutes an interference. Uh, based on that, am I allowed to say why are you interfering? Okay, <laughs> we I, I don't know what they mean when it's interference because the whole electoral process mm -hmm. uh, is managed by the the SRC uh, electoral commission. Mm -hmm. uh, they determine their budget. They 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 set out the whole process. Mm -hmm who qualifies the selection process and everything, they are the people who do it. Mm. Management has no interest. Honestly speaking, I don't even know those who are contesting for elections. Mm. But the same management has now brought a protocol where vetting, for example, would not be in person. It would be um, um, through a virtual platform. But is, is that, is that uh, an interference? Because, the, let me, because let me, let that me, is not what the students are calling Let, let me tell you. Right. They used to have an uh, in-person vetting process. Mm. And then last year, they had the, the vetting process at the Great Hall. Mm. 
one of the places that we don't normally give to students yeah. for such programs. And you know what they did? The whole vetting process resulted in a sack scaffold. Mm. And there was distraction to property, mm. running into millions of cities. Mm. They broke over almost 400 chairs mm. at the Great Hall, which is a place reserved for university events. They, they broke doors, glasses and stuff. They even destroyed many things. And, and so a fact-finding committee, and, and some of them were even seriously injured. Mm. Casualties were recorded. Oh, yes. There were students, it was a, one student who had a, a very, uh, how do you call it, a deep, a, a deep cut in the palm. They, they have to do double stitches. As of now, I am wondering if that student is able to even move the fingers. Because that, that thing was very serious. Other people got injured, but they dodged, they ran away. And so a fact-finding committee was set up. And then the committee recommended many things. One, that uh, some of these things, uh, the, whole virtual, the, whole, the whole vetting process should be scrapped. Because honestly speaking, it's of no use. Uh, the vetting process does not disqualify anybody. Do you understand the point? It doesn't disqualify anybody. It doesn't say that this person is better than the other. It just gives opportunity for people or aspirants to speak about what their intentions are, what they want to do if they win elections. You understand the point? And so if that process is going to lead to injuries and destruction of properties, then the committee said, no, scrap the whole thing. But management said, oh, no, let us not be too hard on students. And so we allow for some form of vetting, but then that should be done virtual. Can, could, couldn't you have opted for, I mean, couldn't you have then considered um, an in-person vetting process, however, with heavy security presence? Oh, there, there was there was security presence. There was a security presence at the time where the issue, the, the mm. issue So okay. are we, we could then say the security did no, not perform their duties? No, the, the security performed, they were performing their duties. By the time the whole eruption started, mm. Uh, but it, it was it, it it was so fast but that by the time the security came in a lot of casualties had been recorded already already and therefore so if, so effectively you are risking you, you don't want to risk we don't want to risk the life of students how long is is this going to continue then uh, the, the the how do you call it you the, mean, the current the current arrangement the arrangement of, of virtual uh, Ooh, i think it has come to stay because the, 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 how do you call it, the, the committee made a number of uh, um, um, recommendations mm. and those recommendations have been accepted by the academic board. Mm. The council has also bless, given blessing to it. And therefore it is here to stay. It is here to stay. Some students are threatening that if that status quo is maintained, they may pour to the streets, they, will, they may demonstrate, they may not even recognize student leaders who come out of of that kind of arrangement and process is that not a worry to you don't you think it would you know as it were there's some kind of tension why why should student uh, uh, be angry about um we trying to protect them they feel the protection is excessive no we are parents you understand the point we are parents uh, this is student election it's, it's not anything it's just and it's just for a few months why do you want to risk the life of students for somebody to die because of campus election mm. and so we were we are worried we <laughs> what happened last year was frightening if you were to be there to see the blood mm. to see the the way somebody's ear was almost chopped off we are not in because a, of vetting. Because of common thing like vetting. We are not in a world war, war zone. Are we in a war torn country? We are not. You could be seeing those things in other part, other parts of the world, not in the in a university, a peaceful country like Ghana and the university like here in USD. Mm. I think we have we have more important things to focus on than uh, some of these trivia matters where students will be trying to hurt themselves because of election. They should understand. It's an appeal. We are appealing to them to go by this because this is best for them. Mm. Let them have the the vetting through virtual platform. Let those students who want to uh, really uh, listen to what people want to say or what 
the, the, the their plans or programs are through many other platforms. We are being, being Focus FM. Mm. If, a, if any aspirant wants to speak to students, we can we give the it's a platform their own platform. We give you opportunity to go there and speak and then broadcast it. There are many ways of doing. Today we are in a we are in a technologically uh, inclined world <laughs> and we have the social media handles. We have so many things. They should use those those avenues to reach out to potential voters. All right, your very final words, uh, briefly. I want to say that uh, this university has chalked a number of success stories, and you know, uh, we 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 are the best in terms of science and technology, and and and, and now even other field. You know, this um, the how do you call it? Yesterday, uh, our law faculty students participated in the African Moot, Moot Court. Court. Yes. Uh, e uh, event.